time is money. We talk about time all the time, but does anybody actually know what it is? It's something we all experience, yet it remains one of the greatest mysteries in physics. We perceive it as a constant and unstoppable force that persistently carries us forward from one moment to the next. But what if I told you that time is not as straightforward as it seems? In our everyday lives, time plays a crucial role. It dictates our schedules, our routines, our aging. It's an integral part of our existence. Yet in the realm of physics, time becomes a complex and elusive concept. It's not just a simple progression of events, instead it's a dimension, much like the three dimensions of space we're familiar with. But there's a twist. Unlike space, we can't stand still in time. The mysteries of time have baffled scientists and philosophers alike for centuries. So let's dive into the fascinating world of time and see if we can shed some light on this intriguing question. Imagine a world with three dimensions of space. Now, add a fourth dimension, time. Just as we move through space, navigating the dimensions of length, width, and height, we also move through the dimension of time. Yet there's a key distinction that sets time apart. The spatial dimensions allow us to move forward and backward, side to side, up and down. In contrast, in the temporal dimension, we're always moving forward. We can't stand still in time, let alone retreat backward. Now think about changing velocity, the rate of an object's change in position. When we change our velocity in space, we can rotate or move into a different spatial direction. Similarly, when we alter our velocity in the time direction, it's like we're rotating into time. Here's a way to visualize it. Imagine you're standing at the junction of a road. One path leads to the north, representing the spatial dimensions, and the other leads to the east, symbolizing the time dimension. If you change your velocity, you can choose to move along the north path, the east path, or any direction in between. You're not just moving in space or time alone, but in a combination of both. This concept is essential to understanding the theory of relativity, where the fabric of the universe is described as space-time, a four-dimensional structure. In this framework, we're not just three-dimensional beings living in a three-dimensional world. We're four-dimensional beings moving through both space and time. But remember, unlike the spatial dimensions, we can't stand still in the time dimension. It's as if we're on a conveyor belt that's constantly moving, carrying us from the past through the present and into the future. We can't hop off the conveyor belt, nor can we turn it backward. So, you see, time is a dimension we're constantly moving in, whether we like it or not. What if I told you that time can slow down? Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? But it's a real phenomenon called time dilation. It's a beautiful paradox born from the laws of physics, a concept that seems to dance on the edge of reality and the fantastical. But it's no illusion or trickery. It's a scientific fact that time can and does slow down. Imagine you're sitting comfortably in your living room, sipping a cup of tea. Now imagine a friend zooming past your house in a super fast car. If you both had precise atomic clocks with you, you'd notice something quite peculiar. Your friend's clock is ticking slower than yours. A minute for them isn't quite the same as a minute for you. This is time dilation, a consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity. It states that the faster an object moves, the slower time passes for it relative to a stationary observer. But it's not just about speed. Gravity also plays a role. Einstein's general relativity tells us that time passes slower in stronger gravitational fields. So, if you're at the bottom of a mountain, your wristwatch would technically tick slower than someone's at the top. But before you start worrying about aging faster than your mountaineer friend, let me assure you, the effect is incredibly tiny. It's not something we notice in our daily lives. However, it becomes significant when dealing with objects moving close to the speed of light or near massive objects like black holes. So why does this happen? It's because, according to relativity, space and time are woven together into a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. And this space-time isn't rigid, it's flexible, bending and stretching with the presence of mass and energy, causing time to dilate or contract. Yes, time can slow down. It's not just a plot in a sci-fi movie, it's real physics. Clocks are everywhere, on our walls, on our phones, on our wrists. But what exactly do they measure? You've probably never given it much thought, but clocks are not just tools to keep us on schedule. They're intricate devices that measure the recurrence of events in a regular way, allowing us to track the passage of time. Think about it. The ticking of a clock, the oscillation of a pendulum, the vibration of a quartz crystal, even the atomic transitions in an atomic clock. 
All these are recurrent events. They repeat over and over again in a consistent, predictable manner. And it's this predictability, this regularity, that allows us to use them as a yardstick for time. Let's take an old-fashioned pendulum clock, for instance. The pendulum swings back and forth, and each swing represents a tiny slice of time. By counting these swings, the clock measures the passage of time. The pendulum's movement is the clock's heartbeat, ticking away steadily, second by second. But the role of clocks extends beyond mere timekeeping. They play an integral part in our understanding of time itself. Imagine a world without clocks. How would we understand the concept of time? How would we measure its passage? Without clocks, our understanding of time would be fundamentally different. Clocks also allow us to explore the fascinating concept of time dilation, a cornerstone of Einstein's theory of relativity. This theory proposes that time can slow down or speed up depending on how fast you're moving or how strong the gravitational field is around you. And it's through precise clocks, such as atomic clocks, that we've been able to experimentally confirm this mind-boggling concept. So, when you glance at your watch or the clock on your wall, remember that you're not just looking at a device that tells you the time. You're looking at a device that measures the rhythm of the universe, the heartbeat of time. It's a tool that helps us understand the nature of time itself, a concept that's as fundamental as it is mysterious. Despite all we've discussed, time remains a mystery. Some physicists even speculate that time may not exist on a fundamental level. Time, as we've come to understand it, plays a crucial role in Einstein's theory of general relativity. This theory, which revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos, posits that time and space are woven together into a four-dimensional fabric known as space-time. This fabric is not static. It's dynamic, bending and warping in response to mass and energy. Think of a stretched rubber sheet. If you were to place a heavy ball in the center, the sheet would sag around the ball. That's analogous to how space-time bends around mass. Now, imagine a smaller ball rolling around the edge of the sag. It would spiral inwards, towards the heavier ball. That's the effect gravity has on objects in space-time. But what about time? Well, in this theory, time is not just a passive backdrop, it's an active participant. The bending of space also affects the passage of time. Near a massive object, time slows down. This is a concept known as time dilation, a real and measurable effect proven by countless experiments. Yet despite its importance in general relativity, the nature of time remains elusive. While it seems real to us, some physicists suggest that time may not exist at a fundamental level. This idea stems from attempts to reconcile general relativity with quantum mechanics, the two great pillars of modern physics. Quantum mechanics describes the world of the very small atoms, particles, and the forces that govern them. It's a world where the usual rules of physics don't apply. And time, in the quantum world, is a strange beast. It doesn't seem to play by the same rules as it does in the macroscopic world we inhabit. In some theories of quantum gravity, such as the so-called theory of everything, time is not a fundamental entity. Instead, it's an emergent phenomenon. Something that arises from more basic, timeless laws of physics. These ideas are still speculative, of course. They're the subject of intense debate and ongoing research. But they offer a tantalizing glimpse into a world where time, as we know it, may not exist. A world that's even stranger and more fascinating than we could ever imagine. So is time real? The answer may be as elusive as time itself, but one thing's for sure. Time continues to tick away, offering endless fascination for those who dare to ponder its mysteries. All right, that's it from our end. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel and like this video. I'll see you again in the next. Bye.